Davis as well as at least one lord. Um, and it's a pleasure to be here for several reasons. Um, I, I first heard about Jupiter Trust and its work uh, primarily because I'm the local MP of, of Andrew Ripka, who has driven the organization, led it, uh, and he got me along, I think, three years ago, two years ago, to a lovely event in this semi-cathedral that we have in my constituency of Teddy to call the Landmark Center. And uh, there was a marvelous presentation that engaged a lot of people and, and aroused my interest. And I think you had me along last year also, and I, this is a, a super organization I want to continue to support. Uh, I'm interested in another sense because I'm interested in what happens in India. I first went there almost exactly 50 years ago and traveled quite widely as a student. And I've been back ever since, many times, uh, both in a family capacity and my work capacity, and more recently as Secretary of State. And the transformation in India, as many of you know, has just been quite unbelievable over that period. When I first went, I think it was the last year before the Green Revolution, and you, you had real hunger, even in Harry Arm in Punjab, um, the seed revolution had taken off. And it was, you know, you saw in the raw uh, what was at that stage desperately poor country with a few isolated little pockets of modernity and steel plants in Bihar and, and other things. And it's, of course, totally changed over that period. And I think what we now have, and it's oversimplifying, but in this vast Indian subcontinent, marvelous place, uh, is, is kind of two Indians. There's, a, uh, there's a, a book called The White Tiger that many of you may have read, a classic of modern Indian literature. Uh, in which uh, Arvind Adiga talks about the modern, uh, connected, international, cosmopolitan India, but also what he describes as the darkness. And he was primarily talking about the poor states like Bihar and Orissa, where actually hundreds of millions of people still live in extreme poverty and with trapped in, in problems of caste and uh, village life not greatly changed from the past. I mean, just as an example of the first, I mean, I've just come back from India for a business visit, and on the back of it, um, I dealt extensively with uh, Tata, the Indian multinational. We did a bit of reception for them yesterday in the Science Museum. And it is remarkable that our biggest manufacturing company in Britain is Indian. Um, they have 19 different companies in Britain employing 60,000 British people, and this is an Indian company. A few days before, I'd been uh, in Surrey, near Guildford, at a place called Surrey Satellites, which is part of Britain's small satellite industry. We do this very well, part of our aerospace industry. High tech. Uh, and these satellites are launched into space on Indian rockets. So, you know, in, India's in the space age and does it very well. And it's uh, actually beneficial for development. But, but this, is, this is one side of it. But the other side is what uh, Arvind Adiga called the darkness. Um, the, the challenge for people who are concerned, uh, whether from an economic standpoint or morally about development, is, is to try and help those areas move up fast. Uh, and I'm, I'm optimistic. I mean, that they, uh, India is moving rapidly out of poverty, just as China is. Um, and every year, you know, tens of millions of people get above the absolute poverty line. This is progress, it's happening. But still, there is a massive amount still to do. And the number of people in the poorest states in eastern India and eastern central India who are in what is classified as absolute poverty, which is a pitifully low level, is more than the population of Western Europe. So we're talking about serious numbers of people. And uh, the work that uh, the Jeevanka Trust does seems absolutely central to how to do that in the most effective way which isn't just showering poor communities with largesse, it's actually helping people to support themselves, and particularly uh, the weaker in people in the community, very often women for traditional reasons, people in the lowest castes, uh, to provide them with a livelihood, to help them start a small business, um, and to try to pool together uh, the skills of international companies, the energy and the idealism of the NGO community, and try to do something to help village communities lift themselves. And I know this is what you do, and you do very well. Uh, and 
Difford, the aid ministry here, I know has been giving you support in recognition of what you achieved. So I just want to thank you, all of you who are involved in this, whether you support uh, Jubica or you're part of it, uh, or just come to offer future support. I think this is a really worthwhile cause. And just on cue, the minister who's just uh, become a minister in, uh, of overseas development has just arrived. Uh, and I will uh, hopefully in a few minutes pass on to her. But I just want to wish you well and thank you for all you do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you.